When faced with a problem or decision, 99% of people choose lazy thinking. They rely on intuition, do a quick Google search, or worse, procrastinate. But if you want to outperform others, you need an edge. You must think differently. The top 1% use mental models to observe the world and achieve extraordinary results. In this video, we'll cover six of the most powerful mental models used by some of the most successful people. Let's start with model number one, circle of competence. In 1996, Warren Buffett wrote a letter to his investors giving them a simple strategy on how to invest successfully. You don't have to be an expert on every company or even many. You only have to be able to evaluate companies within your circle of competence. The size of that circle is not very important. Knowing its boundaries, however, is vital. In other words, to make the most of your financial investments, operate in the areas of business that you know best, your circle of competence. This idea can be applied to all areas of life, especially in your career. You can think of the circle of competence as a small circle within a larger one. The small circle is what you know really well and where you have a competitive advantage. The larger circle is what you think you know, but may not fully understand. In this area, you might compete with people who know more than you. This is the danger zone where you are probably going to lose. The point is to play in areas where you are smart and others are stupid, not the other way around. So what does this mean in practice? When thinking about success and career growth, most people ask, what did someone successful do to achieve success? Then they try to copy their methods, often by focusing on improving their weaknesses. But if you use the circle of competence, you would ask, where do I have the most skills and expertise? Then, focus on your strengths. In other words, once you identify your personal circle of competence, focus on what's inside it and minimize time spent on things outside it. For example, instead of taking on different types of projects, stick to those where you excel the most. It also means working with the right people. Instead of mainly having peers who do the same things as you, surround yourself with those who excel in areas where you don't. This way, you can make better and faster progress. The biggest takeaway is this. For the best results, put all your energy into your strengths instead of trying to improve your weaknesses. The next mental model is the regret minimization framework. In 1994, Jeff Bezos had a great business idea. He wanted to sell books online, which later became Amazon but he had to decide whether to leave his well-paying banking job to start this new venture. He looked for guidance, but couldn't find anything helpful. So, he created his own method called the Regret Minimization Framework. It all starts with a simple question. In X years, will I regret not doing this? The goal is to imagine yourself in the future and think about how you would feel about your decision. For Bezos, he thought about being 80 years old and whether he would regret not starting the company. He chose to minimize his regrets by quitting his job and starting Amazon. So, what does this mean in practice? Bezos used this framework for big life decisions, like changing careers, but it also applies to everyday choices, especially how we spend our time. Imagine how you'll feel when you're 80 years old, looking back at your choices today. If you think you might regret something, try to change your habits starting now. For example, you might regret always working late or on weekends, but you're unlikely to regret spending more time with your family. Next, mental model number three, first principles thinking. In 2002, Elon Musk had a big goal. He wanted to land a rocket on Mars. One major challenge was the high cost. Buying a rocket could cost up to $65 million, but Musk didn't let this stop him. Instead, he used a method called first principles thinking to tackle the problem. Using this approach, Musk questioned why rockets needed to be so expensive. First, he asked, what is a rocket made of? Then he found the market value of those materials. He discovered that the cost of materials was only about 2% of the usual price of a rocket. Realizing this, he understood he could build his own rockets for just a fraction of the cost. This insight led him to create SpaceX. First principles thinking involves breaking a problem down into its core parts. Once you understand the different pieces, you can put them back together in a new way to find a solution. So how can we apply this in our lives? When facing a problem or challenge, most people tend to rely on what they've done before or copy what others are doing. But with first principles thinking, you break down the problem, question every assumption, and find a new solution. For example, as a hiring manager, you might find the current hiring process doesn't attract the right talent. By breaking down the problem, 
you may realize the assumption that the best candidates must have specific educational backgrounds or industry experience is false. This insight can lead you to develop a hiring strategy that welcomes a diverse range of backgrounds. In practice, you don't need to overthink it and break down every problem to the atomic level. Just go a bit deeper than most people usually do. The next mental model on our list is inversion thinking. In the 19th century, the German mathematician Carl Jacobi advised his students to invert, always invert, when facing difficult problems. He believed that complex problems are often easier to solve when approached backward. Although Jacobi used inversion mostly in mathematics, this approach can be helpful in many areas of life. In practice, it means focusing not on what you want to achieve but on what you want to avoid. Ask yourself, what could stop me from reaching this goal? For example, instead of trying to be happier, think about what makes you unhappy and avoid those things. Similarly, if you want to become a sales manager, instead of asking, what can I do to get promoted? You ask, what could keep me from being promoted? Then, make sure to avoid those things. By flipping the problem and seeing it from a different perspective, you can identify risks and mistakes that might slow down your progress. Mental model number five, margin of safety. Imagine you are an engineer that needs to design a bridge that needs to hold the weight of 200 cars. When you think about it, it would be a mistake to design it for just 200 cars. On a busy day, there could be 240 cars on the bridge. The bridge might collapse, leading to a lawsuit and possible jail time. To avoid disasters, engineers include a safety margin in their calculations. For example, they might design a bridge to hold 600 cars instead of just 200. The idea of a safety margin is helpful in all areas of life because it gives you room for error. In life and business, having room for error is important because things rarely go as planned. Projects at work, personal goals, and new business ventures often take longer than expected. Let's say you have a job and you're worried about possible layoffs due to the changing economy. Instead of just hoping for the best and planning to look for a new job if you're laid off, you can use a margin of safety. This could mean starting a side hustle to create an extra source of income or saving more money for an emergency fund to stay financially secure. The key takeaway is to protect yourself from unknown challenges by creating a buffer between what you expect and what might actually happen. The last model on our list is second-order thinking. During British rule in colonial India, the government tried to reduce the number of venomous cobras in the city by offering rewards for dead cobras. This initially worked, as people brought in dead cobras for rewards, reducing their numbers. But surprisingly, the number of dead cobras continued to rise. It turned out that some people started breeding cobras to claim the rewards. When the government stopped the program, the breeders released the cobras, making the original problem even worse. This story shows how important it is to have a second-order thinking. Like the government in the story, most people use first-order thinking. This is when we solve the immediate problem without thinking about the long-term effects. It seems like a win at first, but leads to loss over time. On the other hand, second-order thinkers ask themselves, and then what? They consider the consequences across time, in 10 minutes, 10 months, and 10 years. Then they choose the decision that might be uncomfortable in the short term, but brings the best results over time. For example, let's say you have a small family and want to buy a house. First-order thinking is wanting a big house for more space for the family. But second-order thinking is realizing that more space means more rooms to clean and more stress from a messy home. By taking this approach, you are more likely to make a choice that suits your needs better. First-order thinking is common and leads everyone to similar conclusions, but second-order thinking helps you think differently and see things others might miss. This applies to all the models we've talked about. Exceptional performance comes from spotting things others miss. Think of each model as a lens to view the world. Each lens shows a different perspective and reveals new insights. Using them all is a smart way to stand out from the crowd.